G'day to you. It's a fantastic Friday, and I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week out there. Um, my name is Prosper Taruvinga, and obviously my mission is to help entrepreneurs such as yourself to set up reliable and lucrative businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. So if you're watching this part of the video, you are now watching a replay of an hour long segment um, of the Ask and Prosper show. I want you to hit the number two so that we know who we're working with. And it also just helps us put our content out there. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube right now, leave us a comment. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Great stuff. So I see Elisa Prito is also tuned in. Hope you've had a fantastic week out there. And um, yeah, let us know what you're up to. This is the Ask and Prosper show. You get to ask me questions and I get to answer them. I see Sandy Esperon is also tuned in. Thank you so much. I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week. Um, if you've got any questions for me regarding how you can start, scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable, this is the show for it. Okay, so basically, while everybody else is getting ready or deciding whether they want to watch this video or not, which you're not obliged, by the way, um, I just want you to know that I viscerally believe that if you're running an online business, it has to be profitable and you actually have to enjoy working in that business. And I also believe that if you are really wanting to earn any sort of money online, you have to create for and relate to that audience that you're going to be, um, you know, asking money off of. That's the reason why I sit around every single time, talk to you about my four step formula that has helped not only me, but a lot more other people that uh, sometimes too proud to mention that they're getting all this advice from me, um, which it's up to them anyway, what they want to say. But we are helping uh, quite a lot of businesses out there to be, do and have um, something of profit and something of note. All right. And also every single Friday like this, I sit around here. And if you've got any questions regarding firstly, maybe how I run my business, how I can help you specifically with your business. Um, if you keep it PG, I'm more than happy to answer any question. Today, I really want to keep the theme around execution. Some people just watch like what you're doing and don't participate. You know what that means as well in real life? You're also just watching life pass you by. If you ask questions, um, maybe you might know a thing or two that might actually elevate your business, that might actually put you in the front row to actually see whatever you're creating, um, you know, to, to actually become, uh, you know, something of note. So, you know, it is uh, a privilege to be actually, um, you know, running a business and doing what you absolutely love every single day because the alternative is actually going back to work. You know what I mean? The alternative is actually um, waking up and fulfilling somebody else's dreams. So it's not easy, um, you know, doing this. And especially if you don't give yourself um, KPIs, if you don't give yourself a reason to be doing it every single day, it will become a very cumbersome task or a very hard task. So that's the reason why I want that if you, um, you know, looking at growing, if you're looking at expanding your business and if you're looking at, um, you know, really, you know, uh, expanding on the ideas that you might have. Um, this is the show for you to actually watch because sometimes, I mean, all you can do is all you can do. So, First of all, when people are starting on with the business, uh, half of the time they look at maybe, do I have a website? Do I have a logo? Do people know who I am? The whole branding, you know, do I have a Facebook presence? Do I have a LinkedIn presence? All of that stuff, you know, it's, it's very overwhelming. If you don't have a strategy or if you don't have a plan, and um, you know what they always say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So half of the time, some people really get stopped dead in their tracks um, when it comes to executing because they actually do not have an idea, um, you know, of how to do it or what it is they actually have to do. I see Luke Moroni has just tuned in. Thank you so much, brother. And th it was great seeing your live video earlier on in the morning um, while you were talking to that other guy. Hope you've had a fantastic day so far. This is the Ask and Prosper show, and I want to base this theme of this video, um, you know, around execution. Um, how, um, you know, sometimes people get stopped in their tracks 
because they don't know what to do or how to do certain things within their business. So, um, you know, we're going to be looking at idea versus execution. Why, even if you're holding a billion dollar idea, it's not good enough in and of itself. Um, you really need to put in the work in order to see it to life. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's also this one other thing that's happening online these days that um, when you're first to market or you're the first person with the idea, you always have people sitting on the sidelines that are just watching to see how you're going to do it, that are just going to be watching to see how you're going to, um, you know, move on with, with the idea. Don't let that deter you, you know what I mean? Because you're the only person that knows what you are anticipating off of your business. You're the only person that knows where you want to take your business and your why is the one thing that should, um, you know, be your anchor and be the guiding force towards you actually executing. Because if you don't have something that wakes you up in the morning or if you don't have, um, you know, a need for you to make sure whatever you're putting out there exists in the world, any small thing can deter you, all right? So I will give you a specific example. Today, I um, had a meeting that I was really looking forward to the rest of the week. Um, it's with a lawyer that, you know, I thought if I would add him into my clientele, it would actually, um, you know, put me in a whole different, um, you know, text bracket or whichever way. But for some weird reason, the lawyer... Um, was confused about me having a meeting with him. I don't know how he operates with his clients. And maybe it's also something that is, you know, moving me away from that confusion. Because if somebody cannot remember that they set aside time and they've been having reminders from my auto prompter, then that just means their business is not, you know, in the place where they want it to be. They're not as organized, you know. So, yeah, some things like that may happen within your business and they take you off the footing. You know, if somebody pulls the rug under your feet on something you are holding on to or anticipating it might you know you know deter you from moving forward so um you need to be very careful about what it is that you're doing in order to execute how you're executing and you know that you've got an anchor that is holding you um you know to keep moving forward now luke says uh, my why is bigger than the business. Absolutely. If something bigger than you is waking you up every single day, is making you travel like what I saw you did today, look, um, you know, to a different postcode and you're hustling in a different postcode. What that does is it tells your mind that this is what you're meant to be doing. This is what you're supposed to be doing because I'll be talking about this a little bit later on. Most of us don't work. Most of us don't put in the work, you know what I mean? Because if we are busy, you know, scrolling through Facebook or, you know, just cleaning up our website, time moves and then we actually start thinking that that is work. But actual work is putting money in your bank, you know, putting leads into your, your pipeline, making sure you're converting those and anything else that really puts your name out there, your brand out there and actually keeps you afloat. You know, you've got the cash flow going on in your business. All of those things, that is the actual work. You know, I don't know if you are familiar with the Pareto principle that says 80% of your results is is contributed by 20% of the work that you're putting in. You should use this 80-20 uh, um, you know, principle everywhere else. Like 20% of what I do constitutes my brand management, all right? My brand growth. Look at the things that I do, the 20%, me showing up every single day online, calling people, calling prospects, uh, visiting them at the premises. It doesn't take up much of my day. That's the 20% that actually creates the income that I have within my business. So you need to look at what small things are actually giving you the highest income and start doing, um, you know, working on those things because success really is being able to do those hard, meaningless tasks that actually mean something to you when you convert them into monetary, um, you know, um, means at the end of the day. So it just depends where you are within your business. I know some of some of the people in, 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 in you know, that are in the audience are, still starting some people are not really sure where they're going to take their business and the reason why i know this is every time i approach somebody and i ask them so what's going on in your business their biggest excuse is oh i'm relaunching i'm rebranding oh i'm doing this the thing is nobody knew who your brand was in the first place so you relaunching or you rebranding something that is not known 
is a waste of time. It's that whole doing those things that you think people care about. Put your message out there. Help people get paid for it. It's pretty easy. That's all you've got to be doing. Because we then get overwhelmed. You know why? We never then execute just because we are too busy following a rabbit in a hole that we don't know where it's leading us to. All right. So that's the reason why I really want to have and shield your questions today on the Ask and Prosper show, because you never know. The next big idea that you have might be coming from you. Do you know what I mean? The guys at Uber, they were not the first people to do ride shares. That was, um, you know, um, there's people like uh, um, Fly, there's people like, um, what's that, Lyft, you know, all of those people in that space. But Uber is the one that executed and they went to market first with the idea. Google was not the first search engine. We had Yahoo, we had Bing way before Google was executed. Facebook was not the first, um, you know, social media engine. We had MySpace, we had all the other messenger type connections that were already formulating by that time. Um, Instagram, when they started as an idea, it was a wine company from, if I can remember well, they were a wine business and they wanted to, sh to, sh to, to, to get people to, um, to buy a lot of wine from them. And then they realized that people enjoyed sharing, um, you know, they enjoyed sharing, um, you know, pictures and then Instagram was then made. So your idea right now, it might need yet another input because you can't see the picture when you're within the frame. You have to step outside the frame to see the bigger picture. Get other people to see where your idea is, or how it is. Maybe somebody has already executed on what you're trying to do. There's always a precedent to, to follow. There's always a method to anything else that is out there. So that's the reason why I really want to talk about execution and also use this strategy think plan do because a lot of people just jump into things without pr uh, prior planning so and and then it just makes them fail or it becomes overwhelming because when you don't break an a, a task or an activity into small parts it just becomes too much you know and there's also this saying that says if you want to put down an oak tree you um and you've got a thousand um if you, you're only allowed a thousand hits on that oak tree. If you hit all over the oak tree, you won't put it down. But if you hit the oak tree in the same place 1,000 times, you will put it down. All right. So it's just one of those things. Bruce Lee also says that I am not afraid of a man who knows a thousand kicks, but I'm afraid of a man who's practiced one kick a thousand times. So you really want to see how focused are you on that idea? How willing and able are you to actually bring it out so that it's not so overwhelming? So bring out those questions. Let's talk about execution today. Let's talk about how you can actually implement all of these things into your business. Not just sit there and listen because I'm not here to be, you know, preaching or teaching. All I really want is to make sure that, you know, the people that I'm working with or the people that are around me actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So like I said earlier on, the next big idea could be yours. And I see Troy Holder is in the house. Thank you so much, brother, for tuning in. It's a Friday and this is the Ask and Prosper show. Let me know um, what questions you might have regarding to execution, how you can actually implement certain strategies or certain um, things within your business so that it actually starts turning a profit and you enjoy working in it. Because if the next big idea can be yours, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing that you specifically yourself come up with the next big thing, you know, and that is possible. The only difference between success and failure is the do, all right? The only difference between try and triumph is that little bit of oomph at the end of triumph, you know? So some of us think we might be working, but when you notice that some people within your niche are putting out content, they're putting out books, they're putting out um, e-books, they're doing events, they're doing all sorts, they've got groups that are engaged, then you will start noticing that you probably need to either play catch up or 
take an audit of what are you actually executing? Is it helping you grow? Is it helping you be known? What are your goals and where are you actually going? Because if you break it down like that, it makes it easier for you to know that on Monday, I'm doing my branding. On Tuesday, I'm doing my outreach. On Wednesday, it's my marketing. On Thursday, that's my sales day. On Friday, maybe you're doing a recap of what you're doing. So you know, let me know what business you run in the comments there. Maybe that would help to start off, um, you know, the, the, the ask and prosper session so that I actually know what it is that you are doing every single day that needs, um, you know, maybe an execution plan or maybe that needs a strategy for you to actually start making real money and also you to enjoy working in this business. Because once you start making money, wouldn't that be amazing? You know, I mean, with with all this um, incredible digital, um, you know, opportunities that exist today, the world just seems to be producing idea after idea after idea. But I don't see a lot of people executing. You know, I don't see a lot of people um, really putting out remarkable work out there that, you know, we now live in a world where somebody's butt gets viral just because there's so much mediocrity out there. You know, and, 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 and when it's fake news, people run with that because, you know, it's just one of those things. And when somebody like Kanye West speaks the truth, it breaks the Internet, you know. So what else is out there, you know? Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you might have an idea that you're you're not sure how to execute on. Maybe we can open it up. Somebody in the audience might have an idea of how to actually execute on that, you know. Because first of all, there might be um, obvious ones, you know, there's social media and other, you know, sort of communication platforms like Twitter, uh, Instagram, Reddit, Snapchat, Pinterest. All of those were started off by somebody who had an idea that this thing did not exist. So you might have one and, um, um, you know, yeah, and you might not know how to execute on it. So that's the reason why we really want to uh, speak on to into onto that aspect of, of, of businesses. And also, there's also, um, you know, a, a recent explosion in the software as a service sort of model. You might have a business that you are trying to sell as a one-off product, but if you execute it properly, it might be a service that other people are actually willing to pay month by month, and you can lend yourself into the multi-billion dollar sort of industry um, of payment, um, you know, um, you know, of payment plans or people actually executing on, um, on, 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 on your products in a way that you never knew if you're only executing in a different way. I see Ali Medawi has just tuned in. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in, my brother. Now, Troy Holder says idea to action fast. <laughs> All right. So there's, there's so much that's going on on the online space right now. And, you know, the entrepreneurial opportunities are they're apparent and the timing is perfect. We've got all the equipment we've got all the knowledge in front of us but we lack execution you know so much that um you know luck would almost seem to be an understatement some businesses are just thriving just because the people that are behind them refuse to quit you know some people it's probably based on you know an idea that has come at a perfect time and they executed on it and um you know, maybe your idea is way ahead of time, but you continuously execute. All of those things might be uh, something you might want to talk about. So let's let's hear about what it is that you do. Can you type in the comments what it is that you actually specialize in as a business person? You know? And also, can you type the number one if you think you've got an idea that might actually maybe change the world um, in, 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 in a whole different way or in the way that people are currently conducting business or doing, um, you know, or living their life right now. Um, there's also one other thing. Some people might think if they have an idea, they want to hold it, um, you know, to their chest. I want to really tell you something. All that non-disclosure stuff, is, it's, it happens to those people that um, have a scarcity mindset. Because no one person is ever going to execute an idea in and of themselves and actually make it go through. They, they're going to need, um, you know, people. They're going to need friends. They're going to need, um, you know, maybe an accountant. You're going to need a designer. So, you know, if you, if you partner with somebody or if you 
have any questions re regarding how to execute on an idea, it would actually be figured out by somebody who might be in the audience who knows a thing or two about your industry, you know? So um, it's one of those things. Um, but also, even if you've got the idea right now, I've got some really, really bad news for you. Are you ready for it? Are you, are you ready for the, for, the, for, the, for the bad news? I'm sorry to say your idea is worth jack diddly if you do not execute. You know, if you don't execute. So let's talk about why and what you should do about it. Let's talk about some ideas that might work now or might work in the future. And you're holding on to them, you know, just like Kodak was holding on to a lot of patents that they were not releasing to the public, which are now useless now because that era of film has finished, has ended. Do you know what I mean? And I think it was Gary Vaynerchuk who said that, you know, all your ideas may be solid or even good, but if you don't actually execute on them, um, they don't matter. You know, they don't actually matter if you don't execute. So... It doesn't matter right now if you're holding on to an idea that's probably, say, with the same potential as Uber or, or, or Facebook or Instagram, you know, even if it's positioned ideally for some sort of new technology to come through, like maybe virtual reality or what's that other, what, what's that other platform, you know, if you, if you want, you know, to the, the potential of that idea to go anywhere, you would need something else in abundance. You would need a lot, a lot of effort, all right? You'd need a lot, a lot of time. You'd need a lot, a lot of money. A lot of us don't have any of those um, things right at the same time. Do you know what I mean? And with effort, you're going to need to work your butt off harder than you've ever worked in your entire life. Harder than any other person. You know, and if you have an idea or if you're running a business and you're not working at the level of people are questioning themselves, how the hell does he do all of that? Then you haven't started working. You know, if people are not questioning themselves, how is he managing to do all of those things at the same time? You're not working enough. And you need to do this consistently until your idea takes off. Because with any new idea that you might have, either it's Ali or it's Troy or whoever's watching right now, any new idea is you're changing people's habits. Now, can you type in the comments there, how long does it take to change a habit for a normal person? Can you let me know in the comments, how long does it take for one to change their habits? Do you know how long it takes for a, a normal person to change their habit? You know, because you, you've got to work at that intensity that people are questioning their own existence. That am I, am I, am I even doing enough? You know, you got to have this burning passion for this idea to even see the light of day. You know, you got to be in it to win it. And Troy Holder says 21 days to actually change a habit. Now, if your idea means that people are going to change the way they've been doing stuff before, that means you are going to have to work 21 days for every person you want to sign on to your idea, um, you know, to your idea machine right there. And I see Taf Shamana has just tuned in. What's going on, brother? Hope you've had a fantastic week. Uh, haven't seen you in a minute. Hope all is well, you know. So if you don't have a burning desire for this idea to actually, and what it actually stands for, and you wanting it to actually exist in this world, and you doing everything that is needed for it to actually, you know, prosper, or to actually become something so much that you'd be willing to do almost anything to make it happen. I mean, well, obviously within reason and moral boundaries. Um, yeah, that's the only way it will become, it will come to life. I see Brian Machara is tuned in live. Thank you so much, brother. It was really, really good talking to you earlier on. I love your idea and I really want to see it through, um, come to life. And, you know, we're just talking about all the ideas. And today this, um, you know, our chat gave me this inspiration to talk about ideas and how to actually bring them to life.
you know? When I was, um, when I first came to Australia, you know, I started working in a, uh, in a restaurant, you know, I was cleaning dishes and that was my day-to-day -day job, you know what I mean? I wake up and then start work at four and finish whenever the restaurant closes. But there was this chef, um, he was a uh, pizza maker because it's an Italian restaurant, you know. So him being a pizza maker, he wanted his pizza to be the best pizza. He would come in, he had the keys to the kitchen, so he would come in at like nine in the morning and then he would experiment on how to make the thinnest base, how to make the juiciest base, how to make the crunchiest base. And he would just be doing, experimenting on his craft, playing around with dough, putting in different ingredients, and then putting it into the oven and, and, and checking it out and seeing how it works. He was creating. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't just going by the recipe book or whatever. He was actually creating. When Domino's came up with that cheese, um, you know, cheese uh, crust of pizza, we had already seen that already. Do you know what I mean? And that's when I started noticing that, wait a minute. This guy here is doing all of this just so that he could get better at his craft and nobody is watching. Because you get paid in, 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 in direct proportion to the value you bring onto the marketplace, you know. And most of the stuff that you do in private is what you then get celebrated for in public. So back then I had no idea what hard work was. I just thought that, you know, you show up and you do what you are supposed to do. And then pretty much after that, that's it. But this guy would come in and would experiment with different ingredients, with anchovies, all of those things that were available for him to experiment before he started his work at four. So he would have maybe eight hours ahead of all the other ordinary chefs that just come in to, to perform their duty. Now, which chef is going to have the best pizza on the on the on on Ligon Street or on the on the road there? You know, so that's when I started realizing what true hard work and being immersed in your job really was. And especially if it's a passion for you, you would do all the other seemingly meaningless tasks. You know, and sometimes. You know, we all think because our ego is convincing us that we're putting in the work. The problem is we're actually not doing enough, you know, and, and it's hard for you as a person to admit that you're not putting in the best possible version of the work that you can possibly do. Have you ever tried doing push-ups? You know, have you ever tried doing press-ups when you can't do the last one? Maybe you've just done maybe a hundred and then your PT or whoever is working with you just says one more and you're like, oh, they still one more. And then they ask you for another one more. Do you know you can still do as many as you did right in the first, um, you know, place? But the problem is we are afraid of putting in the work, especially when it means that it, it goes past our ego, you know? And to even think that we're not pulling our weight, it's hard to admit when you see other people doing well. So like, like I said, back then, I didn't know what hard work meant. Back then, after seeing how much harder this chef was working so that he could be one of the top chefs, something clicked. I realized what it truly meant to put in the work. Do things in pri pri private that you will be celebrated for in public. Just like right now, the, I think the Winter Olympics just finished. I don't follow any mainstream stuff, but all of those Winter Olympics do happen. I don't know what the, 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 the turnaround is. Every four years, I think, or maybe the World Cup is about four years. It doesn't mean that after the Winter Olympics, they, start, they go to rest and then, um, you know, that's it. And then they're going to wait until four days before the next Olympics. They're going to continuously work even if nobody's watching. So what are you doing within your business? How are you executing in your business even if no one is watching? You know? Because that's when, when I saw that guy do his work, and I realized what it actually meant to work hard. To give your all to something so intensely that you eat, sleep, and breathe it. How many of you can say that's what you're doing with your business right now? And this is the kind of effort that is required for you to make a big idea successful. You know?
Because if you're not prepared to work hard enough and really put your all into it, it's going to be difficult for you to even show up. Because like I said, guys, like I said, you are working with people that you need to change their way of thinking, whatever your product might be in the market there. But then there's a good news. If you're watching this right now, you're probably one of the few that actually does care about their own progress. The good news is the opportunity to do so is freely available to you. It's freely available to you. And that's why a lot of people hate people that work hard because they know. They absolutely understand what is involved and they know they're not doing their part. So they are afraid if people are working hard, they'll show them off for not doing their part. You know? I mean, assuming you're, you're, you're lucky enough to leave and be able to work in, in, in an environment where it affords you the ability to actually pursue what you, you have a desire in relatively safely in the first world like this. Some people have no internet for the rest of their lives. They don't even know what it is, but they're still functioning and doing, being and having. You are completely free to pursue this passion project, this great idea, until your heart is content. And you're actually free to work for it, it with every ounce of your being and grow as high and as far as it would let you go. But are you though? Are you? You know? And how do you know? Like you say, you know, some people would say, oh, I'm putting in the work. I'm, I'm working hard enough. I'm executing. I'm doing well. Check the statistics. What is the feedback you're getting? Are you getting clients through your door? Are you so rich right now in your bank account you don't need anything more? Do you have people knocking on your house's door saying, because of you, I'm not giving up? Do you have that sort of feedback from your clients saying, oh my God, you have actually changed my life? Maybe your definition of hard work is different to my definition of hard work. But guess what? If we're going to be on the same lane, the one person who puts in the work the most, it'll be harder for them to give up. You know, because half of the time we, we, we don't know what our full potential is. We don't know what our full maximum is until we've actually met somebody who's working harder than we are. And then we'll be like, oh, wait a minute. What's going on? You know, have you ever, um, what do you call it? Have you ever been running in your city? You know, just jogging after work or in the morning jog or something like that. The moment you hear footsteps at the back, you start hustling, don't you? It's not a race. Nobody is blowing the horn or you're not going to win an accolade for winning that particular run in the morning in your city. You know, you're not running for mayor's championship for the morning run runners association or whatever it is. But when somebody's behind you and you hear the sound of their footsteps, it just tells you somehow that you're not doing enough. You know? And there's a problem, you know, that, that, that's, the, that's the biggest problem. When the difference between success and failure is how hard you've worked and the effort you've put in is something that is easily remedied. Just check your statistics. Are you, better, are you a better person or have you grown from the person you were last year to the person you are today? So how do you know you're doing well? Start a tracking system. Because if you're not, what doesn't get measured does not grow. And this is the part that we talk about measuring and tracking on the blueprint. You measure what's working and what's not, and then you track your success. So you want to start a tracking system. I do that every single day. This is, an, uh, 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 you know, what do they call it? One of those diaries. I write, I have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 KPIs every single day that I have to follow. All right. So this was on Tuesday. Um, and then I write how I went and then compare the notes. And then I put a tally on the things that I've done. If reading has been one hour, whatever I have done, it's all tallies there, you know, and then that was 
What day is that? The Wednesday. All of those KPIs that need to be followed. All right. And then yesterday I was busy. I was out. So I didn't track anything that I did yesterday. But today, look at that. We're already tracking and writing notes of what has worked and what hasn't worked. So that's how you start measuring and you record your results. Either you want to do it daily or weekly and, and the variety of actions that you have to execute on that are associated with whatever major goal you have. Because as, as we all know, if you don't break down a goal into manageable pieces, it overwhelms you. That's why you can't execute. And that's why it will be hard for you to actually execute. So that's where the think, plan and do method Think about where you really want to go, plan how you're going to do it, and start putting in the action that is needed for you to actually start executing. All right? And let's say you want to hit, you know, 2,400 accounts at the, uh, uh, until the end of the month. You divide that by the amount of time that is remaining in the year, which is 10 months. All right? And then that leaves you with 240 accounts per month that you have to uh, close deals with or units that you have to sell. And then you, you subdivide that maybe weekly or daily. And it, 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 it sort of, I don't know if I'm doing the math well, but then it would leave you with having eight things you have to do or eight accounts that you have to close for you to get to your goal. But if you really want to succeed, you just, you know, do it a little bit more so that, you know, your actions will actually start culminating into results. So whichever way you're going to do it, record your results so that you can actually track your progress. It will be fun to look at what you have done and then look back at what, what, where you were and say, oh my God, I can't believe I was only just reading two hours. Now I'm reading four hours because when you create an activity within your head, it, you know, it, it, it becomes real. The idea muscle starts growing and you start executing like it's, it's, it's everyday stuff for you, you know? So when you start recording your results, it's easy for you to track your progress. How many of you guys actually track what they're doing? Can you type in the number one if you track your activities, the number two if you're going to start working on that, and number three if it doesn't bother you at all? Please, can you help me so that I understand, you know, the type of people that are watching this video right now? You see, like right now, I'm on a mission to write a book, right? Because I feel like it's time. I've got the audience, I've got the work, and I've got the results to prove that, yes, I can put content out there that is that can be put into a book. So I measure how many, day, uh, how many words I write per day, for example, how many actions that I, I am doing about it, and what actions I'm going to be doing to start marketing the book when it's ready, you know? So each week or each day, if you're grading yourself based on to how close you are to actually hitting your weekly goals or your monthly goals or your hourly goals, you know, you get better by the time and it becomes easy for you to execute. And then you actually can see where you're wasting time, where you need to improve. And then you jot down the relevant notes of what you could do better next time because nobody's going to come and knock on your house's door and actually make that analysis of where you've been or, or what you've done. And don't let your ego go into the way and, and start thinking that you're actually working when you're not even moving the needle at all. Check the statistics. Is your audience growing? Is your income growing? All of those things are feedback as to how much work are you putting in. And after several months, when you actually start following this system, that's the reason why every single day at 2 p.m. AST, it's easy for me to just show up like this. Like no matter what, we, I, could, I could get disrupted, but I can still continue with the show. And you'll find yourself multiple times more productive than when you first started. And that's growth. And if you've got a progressive mindset or if you've got a growth mindset, it's good to hustle. But if you're just trading water... It's not going to help, you know? No? Because remember one thing, guys. If you don't do, no one is going to come and knock on your house's door. No one is going to hold your hand through this, you know? Everyone might have a big idea or something that they're working on. Some of us have a few. I actually have, um, a, 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 at the end of the week, like a 20 ideas um, book that I write new ideas on how I can improve my business. This is my ideas book. 
you know? And every end of the week, like maybe after this show, I'm going to be writing a few of the ideas of how I'm going to actually execute on some of my goals and, and how I've done based on what I'm writing daily. So it's like a factory, you know what I mean? Everything that you do matters towards your end goal. Remember, if you're an entrepreneur, you don't get paid for the hours that you work. You get paid for results. So your mission is to always want to increase on those results. You might say, oh, I've put in the work, I've put in the work, but you're not getting paid per hour. You know, you are not getting paid based on your hourly input. No, you're getting paid based on the results. So why not try and maximize your input, maximize your time so that you do meaningful work at the end of the day? You know, I mean, the truth is, if you're actually watching this video right now, Luke uh, Moroni, Luke Corin, thank you so much. But you're one of the lucky ones. You're one of the lucky ones that get to find me when I'm a little bit salty like this because somebody wasted my time today. <laughs> I'm a little bit angry, you know, but I'm cool. It doesn't stop me from creating and relating to my audience. You know, it's, it's all about execution. Some people are afraid of execution. And I know that if you're watching this right now and if you watched it since I started, you actually have a working brain. You've got the eyes and the mind that's open enough to understand and, and the sense enough to know the value and the importance of self-improvement and consistent growth. Some of the people out there, it's, it's not the same. So what I'm telling you right now, if you're watching this video right now, you have an opportunity to actually prioritize action and execution. You know, and then you can start pursuing that dream that you've always wanted. And when you execute, it's going to be easy. Whatever work that is cut out for you, it just, you know, it becomes um, easy for you to, 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 to execute and it's no longer overwhelming. Because that opportunity in and of itself, guys, that single opportunity is more valuable than any money you might have in the world. If you have a choice and if you have a will and the backbone to actually execute on a dream, because I don't want to lie to you, it is a gift. It is a gift to wake up every single day and have to do what you absolutely love in, in the world. Because Sally down there who's flipping burgers or he's being shouted at by their boss as if they're the worst human being in the world while they're a loving mother, a loving sister or a, a caring partner would want to be in the position you are in right now. So don't waste that chance. Don't waste that chance. But you've got to take the first step. And the first step really is thinking about where you really want to go, planning ahead on what you, what you want to do, and then just doing it. Because it's in the doing that everything else comes to play. You know? It's in the doing. Because you might have the opportunity to run a business. You might just think that the world owes you, um, you, know, uh, uh, you, you know, owes you a favor. But the world owes you nothing. You've got to work, you know? And Steve Thompson, thank you so much for tuning in, man. Hope you've had a fantastic week. So whatever you have, it's probably ready, aim, fire. You know? Think, plan, and do. And then you set yourself up in your ideas for success. Because there might be new opportunities that show up every single day, you know? And they're exciting. I'm not saying don't go out there and try new stuff. And it's really, really, um, you know, easy to jump the gun and follow shiny objects, you know? But some of us can tell if you're putting out mediocre work, but we're not here to judge. We're here to also leave, learn, and contribute. But guess who is also seeing that mediocrity? It's your audience, you know? Your audience is also seeing that mediocrity. So if you jump in without a plan, when you don't know how you're going to execute, your odds of actually hitting the target will be slim. But I want that you execute at least. You know? So ready, aim, fire, think, plan, do. 
The saying is in that order for that particular reason. Ready, aim, fire. Get yourself ready. You know? Because I think it's Will Smith that says, you ain't got to get ready if you're always ready. And that's the reason why I'm always showing up to work like this, because I value what I do. And I respect my work and I want it to exist in the world. You've got to put in the work. You know? Some of us, yes, we're working. We're putting in the work, but what's the feedback that you're getting? Is, is it showing that your hours are well spent? Because in the meantime, guess what's happening? Your competition is watching. And they're learning. All you're doing is uncovering to them the ways in which things are not meant to be done. And then guess what? They're going to conserve all their resources until they're ready. Why wouldn't you just set yourself up for success right from the get-go? Because if your competition is also watching and then they see what not to do and how not to be mediocre... They'll go in and then sharpen their sword. And then when they go in, they just go in all guns blazing. You know? I think it was uh, Jim Collins, Good to Great, that book there. He says that there is no shortcut to achieving any success. He believes that you actually need to turn the flywheel one click at a time. Do the work. If you really want to achieve something faster, well, you do it a, a little bit faster. You know? And when you think, when you plan, when you do, it's easier for you to execute. It's, it's easier for you to actually in, put something of meaning into the world. It's a simple process, but it takes a lot of discipline to follow through. Because if you're not getting results, guess, guess what happens? You start thinking, maybe my idea is not worth it. You know? Maybe you start doubting yourself if you're not getting the results. Because then the fear starts crawling in. The negative uh, naysayers starts pushing you off of your, um, you know, off your balance. But guess what? If you've got the will, the wherewithal, and your why is so in tune to who you are as a person... None of that matters. None of that matters. Do you think there's people that did not tell, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg that he was wasting his time? Do you think he was not questioned by the FBI or was told to shut down? Do you think that did not happen? So you really need to figure out where do I want to go? Just like when you're driving somewhere else or you're driving to a date or you're driving to the market, you put the end um, address in the GPS and then the GPS configures itself like that. You know? So, I, I believe if you've got a business, maybe it's a business plan that then maps out where you are actually going because without a plan, it's hard for you to actually execute. And without the hope of what it is that you want eventually in the end, it will be hard for you to put any action because the pain is too much to bear if you don't know what results you're going to be getting in the end. So dangle that carrot. As long as you know it's there, you will keep walking. But if you've got no carrots that's moving you towards your direction, it's going to be hard. You know? It's going to be difficult. So the process really starts with thinking. Where do you want to be? Who do you want to become? How do you want to be of service? Then when you know all of those things, it's easy to know what to do, how to put all of that, you know, flesh into that skeleton. Because very often, you know what happens? People just run off with the first inkling they have about a great idea. And then they just fire. And then they aim. While they're just giving... The company, the competition, the the the, the 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 competition, you know, ammunition. They're actually educating their competition on on the mistakes that they've made. Because we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And then the learning happens in mistakes. Some mistakes are very expensive. Some mistakes we learn from other people. So if you just run off with an idea, 
without having thought about it and executing it in such a way, first of all, you probably run out of steam. Then your competition knows not to make false starts. Or probably you just executed in a haphazard way and you're not happy with the work and then you then stop executing. You know? So you really got to really, really think about how you're going to put this thing out there. That's the reason why I wanted you to be asking me questions instead of me talking, but it just ended up like that. So you want to develop your ideas into maybe... Because an idea doesn't come fully formed. That's one thing as well. Just like what Instagram. Instagram started off as a, a, a wine app where they wanted to sell more wine. And then it then morphed into what it is today. So ideas don't come fully formed. I remember listening to an interview and the guys from Twitter. I mean, Twitter is grossing as the second biggest social media platform. But they were still trying to figure out where are they taking this business. Snapchat keeps changing. You know, it's this way. They keep morphing. Facebook keeps changing, adapting. So don't just hold on to an idea and then just think that that's the E, B, it and end And, you know, all these strategies, they take time. Just like fine wine. Ideas need time to breathe. You execute, you see what's working, choose what's working and ditch what's not. Measure and track. That's where we're at today. And the more you measure the more you actually see what's working and then it gives you momentum to keep going. You know? And you start making better decisions as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur. Because once you have something working, you already start, you know, being confident with, within yourself. And then you start testing, you validate all those assumptions as you think through your product and you, you go in there and introduce it to the people that are actually going to buy from you because they are the only people that can give you viable and positive feedback because you can't trust auntie sally just because she doesn't like the way something is being done within your business and then you start formulating a business idea just because somebody you you respect is telling you otherwise and then the planning will make it a whole lot easier for you to execute you know because i don't know some 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 people because we're talking about think, plan, do, right? Yeah. And many people think that their plan is set in stone once they, you know, have properly sort of documented their idea. But the real work has just begun. Because planning is how you get that idea from, from the conception part up until execution. So that could be a business plan. That could be a social media strategy. Anything that gives you a blueprint or a map or something to follow so that because you can't keep everything in your head, you know When I when I conduct these shows, I have notes here that give me a plan on how to follow this thing through You know, otherwise I'll get lost or I'll start being irrelevant So you want to develop your 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 plan of attack and then you know discuss with your team if you've got one or people that you actually trust or people that know what they're talking about and see how they have done it in the past, a mentor or somebody like a coach who's got results to show for it. And they might have ideas on how you can do it better, cheaper, faster, you know? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. And also have people that can help you if you can, that are good at what they're doing because you might be the engine or the idea, but... You, you might not have the strength or the, the character or the knowledge of execution. Find out if, if it's something that you need other people to help you bring your idea out or your business. Don't hesitate to outsource some of these things. Because the goal is to actually get whatever people you are with to bring out your ultimate goal. And that's what makes doing easier. All of these things that I'm talking about, these are ideas on how you can actually start implementing and executing on your ideas, you know. Because nothing happens until you do the work. So now we've done a 360 to where we started off from. That some people might not be actually working. Because every week you need to, to, to stay on top of your execution. You know, start the week off like, like what some of us are doing, making sure that you are clear on the priorities for that week. You are clear on what you want to achieve that week. You are clear on how you're going to achieve it. 
Because there's so many things that might come in your way and then, you know, take you off guard or take you by surprise. If you've got a plan, you can easily look back at it and say, okay, right, that was water under the bridge. Let's go back to basics and start putting in the work. And make sure whatever you do, make it into smaller bites. You know, an ant can actually eat an elephant. But it takes smaller bites and it takes a while, but whatever it's doing, it's still eating that elephant. You know, so just take it slow, make sure you're doing, never stop doing. Fail forward if you can, you know, and once you start seeing a bit of progress, you know, it's like every level has its own devil, you know, that dopamine, that, that, you know, that those enzymes that are building up in your body, welling up, they're building neurons in your brain that are actually making you a stronger, better person than you were before. And that's growth. You know, so just to bring it all together, I know maybe I might have just been talking rah, rah, rah to those lazy people. But if you're a good worker and you really want to put in the work, I'm just going to, to to really just boil it down. You know, think, plan and do. Think will help you generate and develop your ideas. Plan will help you work around maybe you've got a team or you've got solutions or strategies to establish you know those clear steps that you need to efficiently put your idea into um into um into action and do is basically just going to help you um, measure and review your progress measure and track your progress each week or each day just to keep you in track of what you're actually doing and so that you have an idea that is fully formed and then it will you know morph into whatever it is that 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 you want eventually now scott says i'm trying my best every day absolutely but for you to get into to triumph add a bit of oomph to that trying my man so that you get triumph all right so <clears throat> So instead of what other people are just doing, fire than aim, or getting surpassed by their competition, or being a sounding board for their competition without them even realizing, the next time you really want to execute on an idea, have it written down, have clear goals around it, have you know an action team around it to actually make you be, do, and have you know a business that's profit uh, profitable and enjoyable. You know all of this is not easy. I'm also still learning every single day. Um, you know, some things don't work out well. Some things do. Um, some things don't happen the way we want them to. But maybe it's the universe just taking you away from something that would have been more painful than the result that you actually anticipated. Because you half the time we get moved away from things that are not meant to be ours when the time is not right. The universe is not stupid. So you can also just help it by showing it where you really want to go. And then it will put the things that you need, the people um, that you need, the resources that you need in front of you so that you can actually start executing. I mean, most of these things we might think, oh, yes, I'm just going to listen to a couple of webinars. I'm just going to attend a few courses. But half of the stuff is within us in order for us to wake up and actually do and all of those things, I can imagine and I can bet you right now, you probably have ebooks and um, courses that are gathering digital dust in your hard drive right now because you haven't executed. So stop just consuming, consuming and accumulating and accumulating. Look at what you already have, which is already you. It's already inside of you and start creating sunshine even on a cloudy day. Because some people only work when something is working for them. And then they cry foul just because it's, it, 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 it flipped the script on them. You know, nothing was ever meant to be. I mean, yes, we might feel we're entitled to be getting certain privileges. But like I always say, guys, it is a gift to wake up every single day and do what you absolutely want. There's so many people that are envious of where you are. There's so many people that want to be and do and have what you have. So you got to defend your existence in that, you know, hierarchy or totem pole. And the universe is not going to just grant it to you just because you want it. You're not a three-year-old kid that just gets whatever they want because they screamed loud enough. Sometimes it works, but you've got to put in the work. 
Alright, I've put in my work, guys. Okay, I mean, obviously, this was supposed to be an ask and and uh, pros ask and prosper show, but we just went in on one hour talking about execution, and I'm hoping that if you really found a few nuggets in this video, uh, you might want to watch it again, just so that you really, really, um, you know, I, 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 Acquaint yourself or you really, really, um, you know, put yourself in that frame of mind of I really need to work extra hard. I really need to put in the work. James Mapinga, thank you so much for tuning in, brother. Do you know what I mean? Because my mission really, like I keep saying, guys, is to, you know, help entrepreneurs such as yourself to set up a reliable and, and lucrative business that is profitable and enjoyable. And if I can be of help, let me know. Um, just reply back to this video and say, hey, Prosper, let's have a chat. I've sent you through a link so that we can have um, a sit down. I might have ideas that might help with your business. You also might have ideas that might help me too. Do you know what I mean? Or maybe we could just share moments together because it's not easy being an entrepreneur. You know, there's people around us that don't understand why we do what we do. So we need each other, you know, just to, to keep each other sane. But at the end of the day, if you're going to do it, um, all out and without a plan, without, you know, strategy, without thinking forward, you won't be able to execute because guess what? It's the second mouse that actually catches the cheese. All right. This has been Prosper. Thank you so much for tuning in. All you can do is all you can do, guys. So go and do what you really want to. And if you have enjoyed this video, just send the love back. Don't just be a watcher. Um, be a contributor too. Bye for now.